I'm going to use a blowtorch on this computer. Hello and welcome to My Man the Maker computer channel. We're back on working with the Dell 4700 computer today and this project has been stalled for the last little while because I was missing a critical piece of equipment which I have since purchased. But before we get into that, let's just unbox the computer and figure out where we are because it's been put away for a couple days. So let's reestablish our situation. So as you can see, I've just packed it away with some bubble wrap, which I'll put to the side. We have a power supply, which we're going to need later, so we'll set that up in a few minutes. More bubble wrap. And some screws. Actually, more than some screws. Quite a few screws. We're going to need those. Protective covering. And then the unit itself. So let's get the box out of the way and start looking at this computer. Now as you remember, the problem with this computer is when you turn it on, nothing happens. I mean, literally nothing. No beep, no nothing. A light goes on indicating the machine has been powered up and that's it. And then when you press the power button again, the fan speeds up and then it just shuts down. There's nothing else going on. So let's plug it in. And turn it on and see what happens. So here we go. I'm just going to turn it so it faces me. Open her up. Open it nice and wide so we can see what's going on on screen. There we go. Plug it in. here. Right there. Okay. It's now plugged in. As you can see, the battery light indicator has turned on. And we have nothing else going on. Let's turn on some more light and then turn off the overhead. We have the battery light on, so let's push the power button. Okay. That's good. And that's it. Nothing else happens. The little DVD makes a little seeking sound, which is kind of normal for when they're initially powered up. And that's it. There's absolutely nothing going on with this machine. I have lights illuminated here. That's nice. And if I press the power button, the fan speeds up. There's a little beep, and then it shuts down. And what that little beep is, is that's the magnetic media hard drive, which is located uh, here, here, sorry, on this side, and it's just making a beep to say when it's turning off. So let's, let's do that all over again. And let's get a little bit of a zoom going on here. So, here we go. And that's it. Nothing else happens. Press the power key again. And there's a little beep. And that little beep is the magnetic disc. Let's talk a little bit about what I think is going on with this laptop. It's currently plugged in. You can see that the battery is in good shape because the battery icon is not amber colored. If I press the button to turn it on, it displays normal behavior in the sense that it looks for the hard drive, it spins up the DVD, and then nothing. So the problem with this machine is that it can't get beyond the power on self test. Now one of the first things that a computer looks for when it does its power on self test is CPU, memory, but before it checks the memory it checks for the presence of a graphics card. And I think what's going on here is the graphics card has failed. I have this suspicion for two reasons. Several years ago, I had a computer where the graphics card failed and the machine just didn't boot. It was my multimedia server and I thought it was very strange because it didn't behave the way computers had behaved with me in the past when there was a problem. Typically they emit a series of beeps and then you use the beeps 
the pattern of the beeps. You go to the computer uh, resource online for that particular type of motherboard and you can look up the beep pattern and figure out what's wrong with the machine. There was no beeps and it turned out that the video card had become unseated in the PCI backplane. So once I pushed the video card and seated it correctly, it had just crept out because of a phenomenon known as thermal creep, which is when you turn things on and off and they heat up and they cool off. Sometimes they move mechanically. This can happen with edge cards. So what ended up happening with that computer was the video card had become unseated and was no longer being recognized in the system. And that prevented the machine from booting whatsoever. Bad memory, sometimes you get beeps. But bad video cards can hang up a system completely. Now the second reason why I think that the problem is a graphics card is this machine has always had graphics card issues. It's always had strange graphic behavior where the screen flickers or even goes out for a few minutes and then comes back. And the person who's using this computer has reported that's been a, a behavior that's happened for a long time, but very randomly. So it's hard to figure out the cause or the source of a problem when it happens intermittently. Now, I've done some research on this computer and the video card is actually an option. You can have a powerful or less powerful video card in this computer, which means it's not mounted on the motherboard. It's in a daughter card or a optional card. There's a, I think there's a K1000, a K2000. There's several different cards that can fit inside of this computer. So my guess is here's what happened. When I first got this machine and it started exhibiting this strange behavior, I had a good look at the inside and I noticed that the heat sink or the heat dispersal or the heat emission system for the GPU side of the computer was blocked by a bunch of what looked like lint. Now once I got rid of that using a forced air, cleaned it out, the computer started to behave much more normally. It got incredibly hot where the GPU is, the graphics card. Now what happens when the graphics card gets really, really hot is they start to develop something called thermal cracking. Now what thermal cracking is, is because components are so slim now and so small, they're actually no longer mounted on their motherboards or their daughter cards using pins. Pins are long gone for most components because they're just so small. Instead, they use something called the BGA and that stands for ball grid array. And basically the way it works is that the chip has a bunch of cross hatched, you can think of them as landing pads, and so does the motherboard. And what you do is you put a little tiny ball of solder between the motherboard and the chip. Well, over time, these little balls develop cracks, and those cracks start to affect the performance of the component in question. GPUs are particularly famous for developing BGA problems. Also, the same thing goes for, ironically enough, other types of high-performance graphical components like HDMI components in fancy stereos. They also develop BGA problems. And the way you fix this is you do something called reflow. Now, reflowing a piece of equipment requires specialized equipment, expensive equipment, and a dedicated facility, and you can look for those kind of places online. What I'm going to do, because I can just buy another daughter card if this card should end up failing, is I'm just going to use a blowtorch. I'm going to use a blowtorch on this computer and I'm going to heat up that chip manually and see if I can't get that solder to reflow. Now solder reflows at around 200 degrees Celsius. The tip flame on this thing is way higher than 200 degrees Celsius, so I should be able to heat it up for just a few seconds and then once I'm done, we're going to put this computer back together again and see if that video card works. If it does, great. I've saved myself a little bit of money, maybe, and I've had a bunch of fun. If it doesn't work, no big deal. I'm just going to buy another daughter card and see if that resolves this problem. But I thought it'd be a fun way to look at showing people how to reflow solder a BGA array underneath a chip using a blowtorch that cost three dollars. So I'm going to take this computer apart and once I get down to the graphical daughter board I'll slow the video down and we'll have a little discussion about what we're going to do.
Well, here we are. The laptop has been disassembled, and here's the GPU daughter card right here. So, removing the daughter card is really straightforward. There's only two screws to hold it on. They're sort of these posty type screws. Best not to lose them within the guts of the machine. Once those screws are taken out, the card rises, and there we are. So as we've seen before, this is an AMD graphical processor. I think I put enough thermal paste on there. There might be uh, a bit too much, hard to say, but uh, it looks okay, so I'll probably put the same amount. The nice thing about the consistency of uh, this generation of thermal paste is that it's still a paste. It's not hard like a rock, like the other stuff was. So that's good. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to clean this chip off and then we're going to reflow this big graphics chip using a blowtorch. And reflows and then once heat is removed, re-solidifies into the solder balls that are necessary to make good electrical connection again. So, here we go. I could see the solder bubbling underneath the edges, so I stopped. And there we are. Okay, the card's been cooling now for 10 minutes. It's cool to the touch. So it's time to put it back in the computer and see if that machine is any better off for having had its GPU cooked with a cigar lighter. First thing we're going to do is put the card back in by reversing the steps that we took. Take it out so it just slots in right here. There, it's in. We take the two screws that were used to uh, hold it down, put them back. It go easier if I do it this way. That's a curse of big fingers. Okay, let's try it again. There we go. Well, the second one's going to be a lot easier once the first is in there. Cards back in. Have to apply some thermal paste, put it all back together, and then boot it up. So we're going to go into fast forward mode now and uh, see how things worked out.
here's the computer assembled and what we want is we want this thing to behave normally now that we've cooked its GPU. So the first test, I suppose you could say, would be to simply plug it in and see if it even responds to power. And as you can see, we have a battery signal, so that's good. Next thing, we push the power button and see if we get anything. And we got nothing. So the problem with this computer might not be the graphics card or we might have actually killed that graphics card for good. So the next step is to get a replacement graphics card. Well, the graphic card reflow seemed to not solve the problem, or at least didn't solve all the problem. But the one thing that I did discover was that uh, you can check the graphics, uh, you can at least check the screen by pressing D and powering on the computer. So I'd like to show you that because it's an interesting show. Here we go. White, red, green, blue, off, on. So I don't know if this accesses the graphic card or not. If it does, this positively demonstrates that the graphic card is working correctly. So I guess the next thing we need to do is figure out A, if this test actually tests the graphics card, and if so, then what is it that's contributing to this machine just shutting off when you turn it on? Because that's what's going on. Turn it on. And it shuts right off. So I'm going to look into that D function and let you know what that D function stands for and how it works. Well, that's it for now. But always remember, if I can do it, you can do it too. That's the point of these videos, and I hope you like this one. So until next time, take care and keep making.